friends, we're here today to talk about totem poles. So you may already know that totem poles are an important art and cultural piece of many of the Pacific Northwest First Peoples. And today, I'm going to share some information about totem poles with you from this publication. Um, and I just want to start by showing you this amazing picture. It was taken in the snow, and you can see these beautiful totem poles in the picture. These, of course, are modern day totem poles. The original totem poles um, have long since routed and um, gone back to the earth. So let me share with you just a bit about totem poles. I understand that you're gonna be making your own totem poles this week. This article is called Towering Totems. It's an art, it's a tradition, it's a story. Brightly colored, fantastic beasts such as killer whale, the raven, the wolf, and the thunderbird are all carved on a tall cedar tree trunk. It's a totem pole. These powerful animals and fierce faces are symbols with special meanings. They might represent legendary figures or real ancestors. The bold colors, the strong lines, and the flowing shapes tell stories about the life of a person, a family, or a tribe. Totem poles are part of the culture of the first people of the Pacific Northwest. These people live in the coastal regions of Oregon, Washington, Southern Alaska, and the Canadian province of British Columbia. Native Americans, or first people, probably began making totem poles long before the first European settlers arrived hundreds of years ago. I would say not probably, they did. Who carved the first totem pole? Let me try to show you this picture on this page. So the, this is a picture of current day Pacific Northwest First People gathering to practice their ancestral traditions of creating and rising up a totem pole. Who carved the first totem pole? If you went searching for the very first totem poles, you wouldn't find them. They rotted away long ago, but you can read about the first totem poles in legends of those who first made them. Years ago, the Pacific Northwestern tribes, including the Haida, the Clinket, and the Chimishin, had no written language. Instead, they passed down information about their history and culture by telling stories. This is a custom called oral tradition. In my class, we talked a lot about stories that were passed down from generation to generation through the oral tradition. I bet you did too in your classes. Each generation repeated these stories to their children. They recorded these stories on totem poles. Here's a picture when photographs were first available of old times. And I'll read to you the caption on that picture. It says, this 1860s photograph shows the Clinket people in front of two totem poles along with photographer um, Edward Moybridge. Legend says that spirits first thought, taught the people to carve their stories into tall tree trunks. People often used western red cedar because many of these trees grew in the area and the trunk was straight and easy to carve. Some totem poles honored the dead while others celebrated a birth or a wedding. A pole outside of a house of an important or wealthy person showed his or her proud family history. But sometimes the peoples, the poles told stories of crimes and if people really messed up, a shame pole might be carved to embarrass them. Here I'm gonna read this caption that tells about this photograph of present day first people above. It says, Tribal elders gather in Higomas, a British Columbia, Canada, for a totem pole raising. Okay, now this, we've got to flip the book so that you can see this whole totem pole. I'm gonna give you a close-up look at the totem pole before I read about the different parts. It's beautiful. So, it says, in fact, this caption up here says, Ellen Neal, the first female Northwest Coast carver, made this pole with her uncle. Reading a totem. Every face on a totem pole is a symbol first people storytellers use to decode the symbols. Let me try again. Every face on a totem pole is a symbol 
First people storytellers decode the symbols to help them understand the totem. The symbols can mean different things to different tribes, but they all celebrate the bond between the people and nature. The animals are from the Pacific Northwest. The bear, the wolf, the whale, the eagle, the beaver, and the raven. They can represent qualities such as intelligence and hard work, but mostly they represent the land, the life, and the spirit of the people. So we're gonna look at this first part here. It says, the Thunderbird. The mythical Thunderbird is the most powerful spirit to the tribes of the Pacific Northwest. It often tops totem poles. Legend says that its blinking eyes bring lightning and its outstretched wings bring thunder. So let's find out more about the bear and the orca. It says, the bear is a symbol of power and is greatly respected. The orca or killer whale stands for family unity because orcas always stay connected to their families. Man and frog. The frog represents wealth. It is also believed to be a communicator that keeps harmony between people and the earth and is a symbol of good luck. And the colors have special meanings too. Let me read you about those. The bright colors on, a tom on totem poles have meanings too. Green represents the earth and nature. White stands for the skies, peace or death. Blue stands for water and happiness. Red means war and courage, as well as the mouths and tongues. Black means power and yellow stands for the sun. I hope that you can use some of this information that you gained today through this reading to help you with your totem pole that you get to create.